6.15 in the morning, we're going to Washington DC today to speak on at the hearing for the conversion therapy bill which protects minors from being subjected to conversion therapy by a licensed practitioner and we're coming down from New York so we got like a four hour drive ahead of us and yeah, it should be really good. The stated purpose of this uh, meeting is Conversion Therapy for Minors Prohibition Amendment Act of 2013. This is to amend the Mental Health Service Delivery Reform Act of 2001 to prohibit the use of practices designed to change the sexual orientation of a minor by a licensed mental health provider. There's no credible evidence that conversion therapy can change a person's sexual orientation or gender identity or expression, and it's abundantly clear that conversion therapy poses devastating risks to LGBT young people. These dangerous practices can lead to depression, decreased self-esteem, substance abuse, homelessness, and even suicide. It's time to confront the real illness. Uh, there's nothing wrong with people who are LGBTQ. Nothing. Uh, let's confront each of the illnesses in serial order. The illness of internalized hatred that causes people to seek to be something they are not. Uh, that is an illness. It is one that should be treated, and it's one that we should talk about. So I really want to caution um, having some kind of law that discriminates against uh, former homosexuals like myself. Today, change is possible. And people who have the desire to live a heterosexual life have the right to choose to get help from a licensed SOCE therapist. How many minors do you see? Because most of the testimony has been um, from those thus right. far over 18. Right. So um, in my many? five years, I've, I've seen approximately 50 to 60 minors. Why do you refer to yourself as ex-gay? Because I used to be gay, I used to feel gay. I mean, I, I literally dressed like a girl when I was a teenager. I hung around all the girlfriends, I wore my necklaces, I had my, my brooches, I was a full on femme. So I wanna ask you, why do you feel that, so you feel at one point you were gay and now you're not gay, or would it be that you were never gay? No, I was, place? you ask, you can ask my ex-boyfriend, I was gay, <laughs> I was gay. We had sex all the time. Uh, we were in love with each other, um, and then I went into therapy to figure out, okay, why is it that um, I hate myself? Well, I didn't hate myself because I was gay. I hated myself because of all the sexual, uh, the sexual abuse that I had, I'd been inflicted upon by my gay boy, boy scout master. So because of that, then I figured out when, when you start digging, we're really complex. It's not a black or white, either you're gay or straight. If you talk to any heterosexual professor, any se sexual sexuality professor at a university, they'll tell you that human sexuality falls on a spectrum. It's not black and white. I was gay. I loved my boyfriend. I went to gay pride in Just LA with him. You, do people still think that you are a gay male? Sometimes. Okay, <laughs> I have gender non-conforming behavior, meaning that I'm sometimes feminine. I like the arts. I like going to go see Wicked. You know, I like that kind of stuff, right? I love Broadway. I love all that. I mean, I have Glee um, on Pandora on my internet, right? The Glee, Glee Radio. But I love that stuff. But that doesn't make me gay. I just like happy, fun music. Why? Well, there are some some um, persons who have been molested and they don't have same-sex attractions. So what do you attribute that to? We can discuss all day if some do and some don't, and I'm happy to get in that discussion with you. And there's scientific studies we can mention. But the point is this bill discriminates, in essence, hates, the fact that uh, it doesn't, doesn't let children get the help that they need. Um, also, the New York mayor's wife, who's in New York, she's an ex-gay, she's ex-lesbian. You can Google her name, Mayor de Blasio's wife. 
She was a militant lesbian, just to let you know. Thank you. An American Psychological Association task force to review peer-reviewed studies on efforts to change sexual orientation concluded that conversion therapy is not effective and may be harmful to LGBT individuals by, internalizing, by increasing internalized stigma, distress, and depression. I say, God, Jesus brought me out and gave me a mandate to come and do what I'm doing today here and to tell the world that you do not have to be gay. Nothing is wrong with it, but God did not design you to be that way. I knew instantly that Jesus Christ could free me from homosexuality. I asked Jesus to come into my heart and forgive me, and he did. I was freed immediately from all desire to continue in the homosexual life. These therapies disguise the science, uses the techniques of shame and rejection and pressure in order to make an individual succumb to what the proponents of these therapies define as normative behaviors. However, sexual orientation is no longer considered an illness or disease that requires a cure. Just as I was born with freckles and black is not an abnormality that I need to be cured from, but instead it is a creation by the Creator as an expression of the diversity of God's creation. Therapists cannot be advocates of their own personal position or their own theological position in therapy. There is nothing to repair in an individual with same-sex attraction. When we take all of the facts into consideration, what we are left with is the reality that efforts to change sexual orientation from homosexuality to heterosexuality do not work, have the potential to do great harm to a child, and are aimed at treating a mental health problem that does not exist. The mental health community has spoken in a clear voice that this practice should not be condoned. By passing this bill, the council can prevent children from being subjected to a very painful and damaging experience. So I began the program and the steps of the theory of conversion therapy. Uh, the first steps are to basically have male bonding. I saturated myself with males only to experience and clear this void of masculinity. Simultaneously, I was to avoid all women to avoid learning effeminate behaviors. I was separated and estranged from my mother and my sisters for three years. Every my grades suffered, my depression increased, my anxiety increased, and so did my contemplation of suicide. I was no longer able to perform with women. I was subjected to Viagra pills to enhance my performance with women. By the age of 21, I, I realized that the therapy was not working. I took about two years to recover, looking for mentors and supporters from the, L from the LGBT community and people who are straight allies. And at age 23, I was able to come out. Today, I'm 26 years old. I am alive and well. I did not commit suicide, and I have the honor to speak to you today. And I am in support of this bill. Well, I'm happy you're here, too. <laughs> now, you have a very unusual circumstance. You said that your parents were very accepting. Of, of who you were, and yet and still your father still said, well, let me go to counseling to make sure. So why was that decision made? It was a fear of homophobia. Okay. My father, he was yeah. more concerned about how others would treat you. Yes, and when he was told that there is no such thing as homosexuality and that I was so young and that I would see results in, in as early as six weeks, because, and that's the age, the target is minors. You, the, the perfect age is 12 before puberty. And so my father thought it was worth giving it a chance. You're terrified. You are afraid that you're going to lose your parents' acceptance. You are afraid that you will get bullied or discriminated in school. And if I had a chance to not come out and not be bullied against or physically hurt because of this stereotype that I would be bullied or discriminated against, I wanted to follow my father's advice who I trusted. And you had no trauma, no previous trauma in, in your life before. That's just who you are. I had a loving, beautiful family. Um, if you know what a Shabbat dinner is, I had Shabbat dinner with 30 family members every Friday of my, every, of my entire life. So we needed to hear your story, too. Thank you um, for sharing that. Are you all aware of any other young people who had therapy and now are heterosexual? No. I've never personally met someone who's actually converted. Now, someone also had a quote from the APA that stated participants have reported beneficial outcomes from this type of therapy. Well, and, and I can give you a quote from a NARTH report along those lines, which I think shows why we are opposed to this. And 
the, the assertion that they've made in their report um, is that no matter how many clients are harmed by efforts to change homosexuals to heterosexuals, that reparative therapy should not be criticized as never helpful if a single client is helped. A young person comes and, you know, to his parents and say, I'm, I'm experiencing these feelings, but I don't like what I'm experiencing. I'm attracted to the same sex. Can they, you know, them, they can't go to a therapist or a counselor? Oh, abso time? absolutely. And it has been testified by a number of people before. Testimony, yes, sir. I just want, the underreporting, that's questions come up before, like how come this practice has gone on for so long? Mo almost all patients that go into the therapy, whether it's the, the minor or the parent bringing the minor, they are closeted. And once the therapy doesn't work or they don't achieve heterosexuality, they remain closeted. And if a parent loses a child by suicide, they are not going to say they lost a child because it was gay or whatever their sexual orientation is. So, you know, in my experience, I've met hundreds and hundreds of minors in my five years. They are closeted going in. They are closeted afterwards. They never achieve heterosexuality. never get to experience whatever their actual sexual orientation is, leaving permanent damage for a li their, their lifetime. So the underreporting is, it's a, it's a societal issue. People are scared to speak up, and why the two of us are here speaking. We are representing a community that we are willing to speak up on what we went through. So they don't even want people to know what they're going into. Because they're outing themselves. If they, are, if they are afraid for a societal issue, whether it's their religion, their family, and they would rather remain closeted, this, that is where the underreporting is. Thank you. Thank you for bringing up that point. Thank you all for your testimony. Hey, my name is Matthew Shurka. I am a gay man. Do you, you tell me? When you have your thoughts together. I'm ready. I'm just, I'm just speaking. Okay. <clears throat> I was gripping my seat the entire hearing. I, I just, I wanted to answer every single argument that was brought up. And, yeah, I was, I was anxious, nonetheless. Uh, and, you know, the conversion therapist fighting against the ban had two arguments. One being God, or the fact that children who've been molested, sexually abused, or raped are confused about their sexual orientation, which has been, which has been proven over and over again that there is no correlation between sexual abuse and your sexual orientation. And my heart is really with the conversion therapists because they themselves are holding on to their own traumas and strongly believe in their work and strongly believe in this therapy. And the, the band getting placed will protect minors, will create an awareness of this issue, and will actually save lives and allow any teenager growing up to explore and have the option, you know, what, <clears throat> let me say that again. This ban will have any teenager explore their sexual orientation, whatever it may be. Sexual orientation isn't black and white, and no therapist can advocate it to be one way or the other. So, this ban getting placed, I think will really begin the start of creating love and acceptance for everyone to be just how they are. And that is really exciting. Um, so we're gonna wait and we're gonna hear once the D.C. Council makes her vote. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I have nothing else to say. <laughs>